Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to quickly do a video on keeping your test data uh, clean with before and after each statements. Uh, as a quick reminder, my name is Ben Fellows. I run Loop Software. Uh, now, actually, we're trying to call it Loop QA, so it's a little bit more apropos. We do a lot of work with Playwright Automation. Uh, we do a lot of manual testing for clients. We work with enterprise startups, kind of anybody and everybody who needs help with test automation and manual testing. Um, diving into it, so why you want to use before each and after each, um, the main reasons are going to be for test case isolation. So as a reminder, in the world of Playwright, you always want to make sure that your tests are never dependent on other tests. Uh, that starts with baking the data, right? So you always want your before each statements to create all the data for the test, and then you want your after each statements to, to tear that data down. Now, I do want to caveat all of this by saying that perf in a preferable scenario, you're going to seed your database. You don't really have to do before each statements. Probably don't even have to do after each statements because you're going to seed your database, do your whole component, um, uh, or do all of your tests, and then basically just wipe out the database, start over. Uh, we're actually going to do some videos on seeding uh, Mongo databases some, uh, and some other SQL databases as well. Um, there's great tools like SQLize and some of the other ones too. If you do want those videos, absolutely please comment uh, below. Um, there's two real strategies when it comes to um, before each and after each. Let's talk about both really quick. So before each um, really comes down to making sure that you have all your test data set up, like we've just said. Uh, that can happen at the database level, the API level, or the UX UI level. Uh, in general, you want to avoid doing data setup at the UX UI level. It's just unnecessarily fragile and takes too long. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically create your data. So in this case, we just have examples with comments to create the product, create the customer, right? So we have a test case. We're going to create an order. You need to create the product. You need to create the customer. Ideally, we've sent some kind of API call or something like that. Um, but you know, you could do it through the API, you could do it through the UX UI. Now, the first strategy that we have for basically the after each statement is going to be using what we call checkpoints, which is basically just Boolean statements that tell you when the data has been created. Therefore, the after each, when it gets to it, knows, okay, if the data has been created, looking at the checkpoint, then delete the data, right? Um, at that point, though, it works really well. Uh, we like it. It makes it clean. You don't have to deal with quite as many just like if statements and stuff like that. Um, but it's strategy number one. So strategy number one is as you're doing your before each statement, you're basically crossing a checkpoint, right? You're crossing a before each statement. So it knows that once this has been toggled on, that that product was created, right? Otherwise, if this test case were to fail, um, it wouldn't get to that point. So that actually raises another really good point about before each and after each. So before each and test will both stop upon failure, right? So if, if it fails during the before each, it's not going to run the test, which is important to recognize that that means that not all your data is going to be um, made, right? The thing about this, though, is the after each, the after each is always going to run regardless of whether or not your data is made. So you have to have your after each be able to uh, be variable to work if the data is there to delete and to not work if the data is not there. Skip it if the data is not there. You don't want your after each just to fail unnecessarily if it can't find the data, right? And how that happens, right, is if you don't make this conditional in some capacity or don't use a Boolean, it's gonna go try to delete something and you're gonna have your basic click statement and then you're gonna get a, a timeout, right? You're gonna say, hey, it didn't find this locator in 30 seconds, it's gonna time out. So just to repeat why that's important, right? Your after each is gonna fire regardless of whether or not your before each and your test pass. So whatever is working in your after each, needs to make sure that it is going to be able to handle an environment where there's not the data to be deleted and it needs to skip those steps or it needs to handle the environment where there is the data or it needs to most likely handle the environment where half the data has been deleted and half the data has not been deleted, right? Well, why do you want to do that? You want to do that so then you can just quickly and easily rerun the test, right? Um, let's assume that you are in an environment that's somewhat limited, you're not able to see the database, you want your test to try to create all of its own data and then use it and then delete all of its own data. So that way you can run that test as many times as you want. By the way, apologies that I keep looking off screen. My monitor is actually to my left right now. So it doesn't exactly look like I'm doing the most uh, uh, sort of effective communicating maybe. Um, quick other notes about it is that um, 
you can do situations where you jump between API, UX, and database, right? If something is created at the UX, UI level, you can delete it at the API level, vice versa. Not really sure you would ever want to do that. Um, and then the only other piece is there is such thing as before all, after all. Um, that's a little bit less used in my experience when it comes to UX, UI level automation. Before all is sort of setting the context wide um, data. So in this situation, like if it was at the API level, maybe you would generate your bearer token as part of the before all or something like that. Um, but really when it comes to test data, keeping your test data clean before each, after each are your best friend. And when you're doing it, just always make sure that your after each is capable of being conditional dependent on if that data was actually created in your before each and after each. Um, if you have another way that you like doing this, absolutely feel free to uh, comment on it below. This is simply our way as there's a lot in Playwright to handle different solutions and I'd love to hear about it. Um, once again, if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check out more content at our blog at www.workwithloop blog. And once again, my name is Ben Fellows. Uh, happy testing. Talk soon.